Embracing Cultural Metaphors with Dr. Ivana Draskovic. So Ivana, in this um, video, we were going to talk about cultural metaphors and the ways in which cultural metaphors can help inform us about clients' experiences and stories. Okay, I was pretty quickly excited about this one because um, we talked about this before, but you know I come from a culture where cultural metaphors and the stories that were passed on from generation to generation were very important. Um, and, uh, you know, I always say, my grandma would say, when, when fairies walk the earth, or when dragon walk the earth. And uh, when, you, when you are trying to understand somebody's story, I think you have to be open to, to using, to listening to these cultural pieces and to using them to help people move forward. And um, we talked a lot uh, about the metaphor of green dragon that I've used in my chapter that I wrote um, two years ago um, in, in, in terms of a refugee experience. And the story of green dragon really is not my story. It's a story um, that my uh, colleague from Bosnia, who is a psychologist there, shared about women who were survivors of war and who have lost all of their men. Um, through mass um, mass slaughter, basically eight thousand Muslim men were and boys were killed in the ten of three or four days. So she was tasked to go and um, have these group sessions with these women, and they would often talk about green dragons that came to their village, took away their girl, their girls, take away their men. Uh, they held the keys to the city and stuff like that, where. You know, I, I, it made me think that, you know, if these women were here and coming for counseling, we would probably jump into that conclusion of they're psychotic, their PTSD is really making them dissociate, their, you know, trauma is so horrendous that they are having maybe chemical changes in brain. But in, in fact, like when I look back at, at this um, conversation I had with her and then developing a metaphor to show people what, what that means, these stories are the stories that help them move through their trauma. They create collective sort of community where they share a story. So it's not specific. They don't have to necessarily share the most painful details, but they understand each other and they come together in that story. So I think um, in being open to listening to something that clients shares that is very culturally specific um, is, is really opening up doors for clients' language to come into discussion. It can really give you an idea of who they are as a whole person. You know, we can't expect people that come from other parts of the world to fully understand how we want them to understand their struggles. And anytime I try to do that, anytime I try to say to a refugee, you, you know, your, your symptoms are consistent with PTSD, they wouldn't really even acknowledge that sometimes. Bosnian people wouldn't acknowledge that. They would just completely ignore you and go into a storytelling so about something uh, that, that seems almost extraordinary. So for me, the, the, the idea of the story of a green dragon is sort of a testament to the trauma that happened that can be shared in ways that make uh, sense to, to these people, to these women, and can help them weave a new story of survival. And um, so, so that's where my interest in, in listening and using cultural metaphor in, in, in um, my work came from. I never disregard the story. I think every story, even if, if it sounds really crazy and I'm putting it in quotation marks, is a story to be listened to. I never disregard who and what comes with clients and, and accompanies them to sessions sometimes. There will be spirits, sometimes there will be ancestors, sometimes there will be animals. You need to honor that process. And um, I had a bit of a, aside from growing up in a storytelling culture and, and, and that kind of metaphoric 
storytelling. I've also was really, and this is a privilege of mine, and it's an honor of mine, last, last summer, I was gifted an indigenous name, both Blackfoot and, and, and Cree name. And um, I, I can't tell them, uh, say them in, in any of the languages because I don't want to butcher the language I'm practicing. But a direct translation in English is tornado woman. And initially my response to an elder was like, I remember my thinking process and going, of course, like they couldn't come up with anything more original for me because that's exactly how I feel right now. But I think he sensed what was going on with me. So he, he sat next to me and he said, you know, do you know what this means? And I said, well, I don't know, you know, maybe I'm temperamental. Like I, I came from a really westernized explanation. And he said, yes, tornado is very damaging on the outskirts. If you look at the tornado, that's what picks up debris. That's what damages your property, picks up cars up in the air. But if you walk into the tornado and you look up, you're going to see the blue sky because the tornado is not closed off um, on the top. And if you look up, you're going to see the four grandfathers sitting up there. And I remember sitting in that ceremony and thinking, you know, like this is, this, this deconstructs my complete understanding of tornado mm -hmm. and what I, what I thought that means. So I started telling clients about this story and I started in, uh, weaving that story into when they feel anxious or when they feel that there is an emotional storm inside of them and they need to ground, I started using that tornado woman story for grounding and for helping them find their feet on the ground and look up and understand. And almost everyone, and I've talked to many different clients, uh, gets that story. It goes, when I, even when I say, if you look up, I usually get the follow-up feedback. I see the blue sky. That's the eye of the eye. The eye of the storm is the calmest, mm. and that's quite a gift, and it's quite a simple explanation. Um, but we tend to make things really complicated, and so my, um, I think the word that comes uh, to me when I think about cultural metaphors is willingness. And willingness is different from acceptance. You don't have to accept something and believe it blindly um, if it's different from, from your beliefs and values, but willingness to have it present in your session and work with it is a gift. Because the story that sounds really crazy can give you so much more than medicalized, you know, story about PTSD symptoms or anxiety or depression, like the underlying lived experience that however is shared gives you so much more, gives you so richness. Mm -hmm. As you were talking, I was thinking, it's really interesting um, that this metaphor of the, of the tornado was gifted to you and yet it became so significant to your self-understanding. And so it's kind of the piece I drew from that is that we can also, um, we can also co-construct these metaphors in a way that are meaningful to both people in the session. And you, they have different lenses, but that, that conversation about them brings sometimes new meaning. Well, exactly, because I think that the elder sort of put it in perspective for me by saying, you know, it's not always damaging. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can understand it from a different perspective. And we, I think as people, we are we almost have a tendency to think negatively first off, right? Our brain, that's a perspective. I always say to, to clients and to, to students, like I, I tell them, when your brain produces these difficult thoughts and feelings, that's a protective quality of the brain. The brain is trying to protect you, but it doesn't work for you anymore because the context has changed. Mm -hmm. But important piece is not to prematurely mm -hmm. apologize, not to prematurely diagnose, but to actually have space and willingness to hear stories that might be weird, but they might, they might give you so much more than just being weird. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.